certainly thank all the members. We have had so many people working on multiple aspects of this all throughout, uh, really for the last six months to bring us to this point. Um, and I, I recognize that this is, a, this is one step in the process. This conversation is going to continue for a long time. We've worked with a, a tremendous amount of providers to try to get their input on this. But our friends in the Senate, I'm sure, and, they, and talking with them, they're focused on the same problem and trying to come up with solutions as well. We look forward to working with them, working with the administration. Um, I should have said this in the beginning, this $170 million does not reallocate any of the CURES funding that came from the federal government. So that money, this is all new money. Correct. This is all new money that uh, will uh, be in addition to the CURES funding. So with the CURES funding on top of this, we're pushing $200 million uh, on this uh, investment. So look forward to working with our partners, the administration and the Senate. You know, and the last thing I guess I would say about this entire plan, it's simply about getting people healthier, keeping families together, and making our community strong. And I think that's really what we're pushing for the uh, biggest piece of our plan by far um, and with that I will uh, I will wrap it up and turn it back up to the speaker. And as you can see a lot of this is off the Buckeye pathway. Um, many of these things that we want to focus on is the pathway that we originally established. Um, I'm going to ask uh, Representative Schuring to talk just quickly a little bit about our in efforts to help uh, our farmers uh, in our state. We have uh, uh, been able to find a way and pathway to maybe assist in the CAUV formula uh, change, and then also uh, probably ask as you as you heard Chairman Smith talk about, not only are we doing the one and a half percent cuts across the board, but we have some targeted areas that we're cutting. But we're also looking for ways to make things more effective and efficient. So I'll ask uh, Representative Sykes to talk a little bit about some uh, board consolidations we're doing, and I'll uh, uh, have uh, our Vice Chairman say a few words before we take some questions. All right, thank you, Speaker. Our agricultural community has had some very difficult times. In fact, they've been uh, caught between a rock and a hard place. On one hand, uh, their property values have gone up exponentially, over 300% in recent years. On the other hand, uh, farm income, income is down. Uh, the lowest, the second lowest has been since the 1920s. So we need to modernize the CAUV formula. Currently, uh, the formula is calculated by using an equity rate that is based upon uh, the prime <coughs> interest rate plus two. Uh, that has nothing to do with the, the farm economy. So what we're doing is we're saying we're going to change that <coughs> and use as an equity rate uh, the farm economy uh, based upon information that's disseminated from the U.S. Department of Agriculture. And that then will change the capitalization rate and lower uh, the uh, property values and give them more dispensation based upon a true value of the agricultural use. Um, we have decided, and the reason this works, is because we will spread it out over six years, and that will dilute the impact it has on local governments, schools. Uh, and so we think it's a fair formula. It's a formula that uh, has been supported by the uh, Farm Bureau, and uh, we think it's needed, and we think uh, its impact uh, will be minimal because of the way we structured it. Chairman Sykes. Thank you, Speaker. In uh, 2015, the United States Supreme Court issued a decision that said that uh, regulatory and licensing boards in which a plurality or more of the members are active market participants does not have immunity from antitrust claims that they acted in a way to uh, hurt competition. Uh, that uh, sits there like a, a elephant in the room, and this budget bill addresses that by providing independent review of the action of all of our regulatory boards and commissions, uh, and that regulatory review will be housed in the Office of the Common Sense Initiative, our very, very successful uh, program run by the Lieutenant Governor uh, that reviews uh, other rules of the agencies to determine whether they have an adverse effect on small business. So we will have an independent uh, review of all potentially any competitive activities of all boards and commissions. In addition, we're using this opportunity to achieve uh, some uh, board, and, board and commission consolidation. We believe that there's greater efficiencies to be obtained from having cross-training and uh, you know, of staff. Uh, they, we think that will be a more efficient way to operate, at least uh, to a certain extent. The board consolidation proposed by the governor is not being done just the way he proposed it. 
However, we are proposing the consolidation of the library cosmetology boards, the uh, consolidation of the uh, audiology and speech pathology board with the hearing aid dealers and fitters board, and consolidation of the optometry board with the optical dispensers board, uh, thereby reducing the number of boards and commissions. In addition, the orthotics board is being abolished and the dietetics board is being made an advisory council to the medical board, as is the respiratory care board. Uh, the other boards that were proposed for consolidation by the governor are going to remain independent uh, while we continue to look at, uh, at uh, the results of this step forward in improving the efficiency of our boards and commissions. But the big news is, uh, if this stands, we will have a way forward and our board and commission members will not face the prospect of being hailed into court facing antitrust charges, which can be very, very expensive to defend and very, very expensive when a judgment is rendered against them. So. Uh, this is a big piece of this budget. It was a big piece of the governor's ask. We're happy to meet him, I think, halfway or more than halfway in this important budget. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. And finally, our uh, Vice Chairman, uh, Chairman Ryan. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, first off, I'd like to thank the Speaker and, and Chairman Smith for their leadership on the, on the host agenda you see here. Um, without them, this would not be going forward, and, and they're all in, and, and I can't thank them enough. Uh, more importantly, though, I would like to thank the um, those that have been on the front lines of this issue for multiple years that have been uh, fighting the hurts out against what's going on in our state, from uh, law enforcement, uh, first responders, treatment professionals, to uh, uh, provider agencies, state-based groups, local governments, and uh, even families of those addicted to mentally ill. Um, we just, from the bottom of our hearts, can't thank them enough for the work that they've been doing but um, also importantly for their engagement in this process with us and, and coming to Columbus for countless hours of, of educating us and trying to help us uh, come up with the plan that you, you see before you today. So um, it, you know, it's my hope and prayer that if this uh, budget proposal will um, you know, put some much needed infrastructure and assistance to those groups and, and inspire really every Ohio to engage in this fight and help us for 